I believe in the future of agriculture. That simple phrase opens as the beginning of a five paragraph long creed detailing the standards and ideals held by members of the FFA or the Future Farmers of America, which sports the title as the, world, as the largest youth organization in the nation. Just for reference, this creed was written by a man named Erwin Milton Tiffany back in 1928 and was adopted by the National FFA organization two years later at their convention in 1930. Let's pause for a moment and observe a bit of the social climate at the time. In the year 1930 alone, agriculture made up approximately 21.5% of the American labor force and contributed about 7.7% of the nation's GDP. Now, let's compare that to 2019, where those involved in agriculture comprised only 1.3% of the American labor force and contributed about 1% to the nation's GDP. Wait, what's with this drop? What's with this decrease? The answer to our rather curious anomaly can be found in the rapid urbanization of the United States following President FDR's New Deal and the high that the nation is riding after victory in World War II. The ideal standard of living became picket fence neighborhoods and trimmed lawns, thus causing the average American to leave the farm for the city. Now that lands us in our current predicament, one that spelled startling realizations such as how the average American is three to four generations removed from the farm. Or, according to the US Department of Agriculture, the average age of the American farmer is 57 and a half years old. I'll press play on that opening phrase again. I believe in the future of agriculture. With odds that may appear unsurmountable, believing might seem difficult. I mean, it's rather disheartening to see this drop in a profession that was literally the cause of humanity settling down and specializing into many of the careers we see today. However, rest assured that this isn't as terrible as one might think. And that is thanks to a rather special, dynamic, talented breed of individuals who make it their life's goal to instill a love and a passion for this great industry. Those people are called agricultural educators. Wait, wait, hold on. Agriculture can be taught? Sounds crazy, right? The thought of students sitting in a classroom and learning about farming and ranching can strike a rather uncanny image into the minds of those who are unfamiliar with it. However, believe it or not, agricultural education is much more prevalent and more modern than one might think. According to the National Association of Agricultural Educators, or the NAAE, approximately 11,000 schools across the United States, including Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, offer an agricultural education experience to their students. What these students learn, however, is oftentimes as varied as the climate, the commodity, and the agricultural practices local to their area. See, the process is simple. Every student begins in an introduction class. In these classes, students are taught the history of agriculture in their area, the careers offered by the great industry, and then they get to enjoy little snippets of other classes offered through the school's ag program. For example, students here in northern Colorado might learn more about the production of sugar via sugar beets, or the logistics and science behind beef production than, say, students in Florida, who might be learning more about the industry behind citrus fruits and sugar cane. Again, the climate and the commodity are often terms of variation for the curriculum given to the students. Now you'd think, with all of this variation in terms of classes offered, that these programs receive mass funding from the schools. But oftentimes that isn't the case. Allow me to take a more personal turn with this. See, the agriculture education program I am part of 
through Windsor High School, was one of the original 10 schools with an FFA chapter. In fact, we got to sign the state charter back in 1929. Windsor kept that reputation as they received funding from scholarships, fundraisers, and grants, and occasionally from the school. That is until the 1980s, when budget cuts to the program forced the chapter to dissolve. And it remained all but forgotten until the early 2000s, when a small group of students had this initiative to put together a new chapter. And eventually, they convinced the school district to bring in teachers to educate these students. Flash forward to nearly two decades later. Windsor FFA stands as one of the top five largest chapters in the state of Colorado, with numerous alumni going on to serve as state officers and countless current members taking competitive teams to national conventions as not only state champions, but as representatives of the state of Colorado and of Colorado agriculture. But if the future seems so bright, why change it? If farmers and ranchers make up only 1.3% of the American labor force, why go through all the trouble of creating an agricultural education program just for a small statistic? The why comes in rather startling statements made by those who have not had the opportunity to partake in this experience. For example, 14.6 million Americans believe that chocolate milk comes from brown cows. I'll let you simmer on that for a moment. That's insane, right? Due to agriculture being one of the world's oldest professions, those involved in the industry have had massive amounts of time to adapt to a population that always has been and always will be growing quickly. We are expected to reach 9 billion people by the year 2050. How do you feed 9 billion hungry mouths? You advance. These advancements see no bounds, ranging from humane slaughter of livestock to vertical farming and to even pursuing crop management using drone technology. These advancements give all the more reason for students to be learning everything they can about the industry and to be adapting and changing and ebbing and flowing wherever this industry goes. But how? How does something as rudimentary as the baselines of agriculture relate to the act, the grand act of coming alive? Well, agriculture in itself is the business and the art, if you will, of keeping people alive. But I know that answer might be a little too obvious and a little too easy to grasp. So try this on for size. When a student joins their first agricultural education class and gets that firsthand experience as to where their food comes from and how it gets from farm to table, that spark, that desire, that drive to learn more comes alive. Maybe that student attends their first national convention and makes their way through swarms of members donning the famous corduroy jacket in the well-named Sea of Blue. That feeling of being a small, yet significant cog in a much larger, much more all-encompassing machine comes alive. Let's say that student goes on, earning the coveted position in every state association as a state officer. That student hears their name and their chapter announced before sprinting on stage to join a dynamic team of individuals. Sure, that livelihood, that drive, that sense of passion might already be very much alive. But getting to travel and meet incredible members and instill those feelings in the hearts and minds of the future, that's what I call coming alive. It's something, as a future agricultural educator, a current FFA member, and as someone who was born and raised in the ag industry, I can attest to. Not only is instilling this love and planting and growing it for the future an amazing opportunity. It's a requirement. See, there's this famous saying coined by speakers, ag advocates, and organizations aplenty. 
the saying goes a little something like this. Without farmers, you would be naked, hungry, and sober. So think a farmer. Think a rancher. Think an ag teacher. Think a food scientist, a geneticist, an ag mechanic. Think anyone involved in processing, producing, and marketing the products that you use on a daily basis. Thank them for simply coming alive in the industry, the business, the art of keeping us alive. Thank you.